from around the globe in sold out arenas and humble churches from out on the streets to your screen and now the time and what must be done on this edition of Farrakhan Speaks Greetings to you I'm Minister Louis Farrakhan National Representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad the eternal leader of the Nation of Islam and a warner to the Aboriginal people of the earth and the black people of America and the Western Hemisphere in particular and a warner to America and the nations of the earth Elijah Muhammad is that great preacher of freedom justice and equality and it is my great honor and my great privilege to represent him once again to you and to the nations of the earth he it is who has given us this subject the time and what must be done I want to quote again from the Holy Quran and every nation has a term and when its term comes they cannot remain behind the least while nor can they precede it it is our sacred duty to warn America that the term a fixed term of her power to exercise authority and rule not over only over her own citizens but over the peoples of the earth that term is fast coming to an end we also quoted from the Bible in our last uh, lecture and the nations are angry and thy wrath is come for it is the time of the dead that they should be judged and given justice the honorable Elijah Muhammad like Moses before him is appealing to the modern Pharaoh the government and people of the United States that God has come and has chosen for himself the despised the rejected the unloved the unwanted black man and woman of America to be the cornerstone of his new kingdom of righteousness and he is very angry at the way the government and people of the United States have treated his chosen people and he's giving America a chance uh, a grace period that they might repent of the evil that they have done to us and do justice by us that they might even be forgiven or pardoned and given an extension of time the honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed to ancient Babylon as a sign of America today and I would like to quote from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's monumental book titled the fall of America this is a book my dear preachers and teachers 
black, white, Muslim, Christian, Hebrew, Jewish, you should get this book because it will convince you that God has intervened in our affairs and raised among us a man whom he has taught the meaning of Torah and Gospel and Quran that he might end the disputation between people of religion under the guidance of the great Mahdi to produce the oneness of religion in fulfillment of what is written in both the Bible and Quran that in that day there will be one faith, one Lord, and one baptism, and all of the peoples of the earth will believe in that religion those who live after the destruction of this present world and its power to rule. Let me read from this great book by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and he is talking to us about modern Babylon. He writes, we say modern when we refer to something comparing it to the past. This name Babylon begins in Genesis, the 10th chapter, the 10th verse, and it is spelled Babel. But the same name seems to have changed itself into the name Babylon as we come to the most late day history of this name, Babel, a tower of confusion, Babylon. According to the history of Babylon throughout the Bible, Babylon is referred to as something prophesied as having a failure upon her progress and rise. In the book of Psalms, the 137th chapter, the 18th verse, David prophesies that Babylon was made to be destroyed. We know of nothing other than Satan and his works that was actually made to be destroyed spiritually as well as physically. Satan was not made to exist forever. This is verified by both the Bible and the Holy Quran and by all writers and teachers of Scripture. So here, Babylon seems to refer not only to some town or city, but it also seems to refer to a race or a nation of people. Ancient Babylon, as is known by all of us, was a city under the reign of Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar. The fall of Babylon was final and Babylon was never rebuilt. This points to the same prophecy of the devil and his kingdom in the revelation of John in the Bible, that Satan and his kingdom would be burnt up and it would never rise again. In the epistles of Paul, there is a prophecy of the devil and his kingdom that the devil was made as fuel for the fire. The Holy Quran refers to this prophecy in these words, quote, fuel of hell is men and stones. So the fuel of hell is men and stones. We do not know why stones are put there with men. It could be referring to the hardness of the stone and to the hardness of the heart and the hardness of the wicked against truth and righteousness. In the book of Revelations in the Bible, it is prophesied that an angel 
heralded a warning to the people that Babylon is falling. He then tells why Babylon fell. And Babylon fell because she is the habitation of devils and the hole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. The term cage, this tells us that her cities and her country became a cage for people of filth. The Bible teaches us that the God referred to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah as being people whose doing and work was such that it came up and stunk in the nostrils of God. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes, but I think that if the God would get a good smell of this modern wicked filth here, he would think the smell of Babylon is in his nostrils was like the smell of a flower compared to the wickedness of today. Babylon is used as an example for some distant people or their history. According to the prophets, this name Babylon, again, begins in Genesis and ends in Revelation. In Jeremiah, in the Bible, we see a daughter of ancient Babylon. He calls the people the daughters of Babylon. The daughter of ancient Babylon refers to a more modern and late civilization whose people give themselves over to the practice of the same evil that the people of ancient Babylon practice. But the modern people were more capable of improving on the practices of the people of ancient Babylon. Therefore, he calls this modern people the daughters of Babylon. Isaiah the prophet in the Bible in chapter 47 verse 1 asks this people, the daughter of Babylon, come down and sit in the dust. O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. The daughters of Babylon seem to have been a very rich people, and they had fallen from a state of great wealth. Isaiah uses Babylon as a pretty girl whose lovers used to be plentiful because of her wealth and attractiveness. But now she has become ill looking and has no more attraction upon the people. So he said, sit down in the dust. You are no more respected and attractive to the people. America in her decline. A writer recently wrote, the decline of the empire of America and its fall. She's not as attractive as she once was. She's not as wealthy as she once was, but like most beautiful people that become ugly, they find a way to get a facelift or something to make them look more attractive again. And this is what the Federal Reserve bailout of America, $85 billion a month, buying up mortgage and notes and treasury notes. Well, America, this is false because the money that you're borrowing and you're already over your head in debt and the Federal Reserve is printing money with no backing, it soon will collapse, but it allows you to keep on looking good in the eyes of the world. But that look, even though you got a facelift, as some do, begins to sag and fall, and the ugliness comes back again. 
the prophet Jeremiah warned ancient Babylon that she had a daughter coming. The daughter meets the fate destined for Babylon. She was made to be taken. Satan was made to be taken and destroyed. Why? Because she had become a place where evil of every kind was practiced. Well, this Babylon is now at the term of the end. Let us go to the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter, around the 5th verse. And it's talking about a wonder in heaven, a woman that was pregnant with a child that was destined to rule the nations with a rod of iron. This child is the heir to the vineyard. This child is the future ruler of the next world. This child is a representative of a people like a stone that the builders rejected and is now becoming the headstone of a corner of a brand new world and civilization. The word stone is used, but again, there's a prophecy in the Old Testament of a stone hewn out of a mountain without hands. You don't get a stone out of a mountain without some hand being put to get that stone. But the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that the mountain here is America. And the stone that is being hewn out of the mountain is the black man and woman of America, his choice. And that stone rolls down the mountain and picks up mass and strength and smokes a great image with a head of gold, a breastplate of silver, and legs of iron, and feet iron mixed with miry clay. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad explains the vision of that great um, image. With the feet of iron mixed with miry clay, says that that head of gold has a very weak foundation. And the foundation of the wealth of gold and silver in this world is based on the poor, the weak of the world. And this is why they always feared when any man would rise from among the poor and be listened to by the poor. Because as the poor rise, the rich fall. And so this stone hewn out of the mountain strikes the image at its foundation and the image collapses and it becomes so great that it fills the earth. And so it is with that parable that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad pointed out that Jesus spoke of the mustard seed, how tiny it is when you see it, but when it is planted in the proper soil under the right environmental conditions, that seed bursts into a tree and it said the beasts found refuge under it and the birds found refuge under its branches. This is a sign of the kingdom of God and how it starts small and then grows and takes over the entire earth and fills the earth with the praise of God. This Babylon, this modern Babylon, the United States of America and her great influence in the world. Well, if Satan was made to be taken and destroyed. And Babylon was destroyed and never was allowed to be rebuilt. So it was 
with Sodom and Gomorrah. Right now in Iraq, Babylon is there, but she's not rebuilt. So it is with Sodom and Gomorrah, as God destroyed it, not even a blade of grass grows there today. So terrible was God's hate of the practice going on in Sodom and Gomorrah, and so great was God's dislike of the kings of Babylon. And inside Babylon was Daniel the prophet, and the Jews of that day were persecuted in Babylon. So Daniel rose up to be a guide for the children of Israel, and they were allowed by the grace of God to listen to Daniel. And Daniel wrote on the wall, your kingdom is found wanting, has been weighed in the balance. America is like that today. A modern Daniel has arisen out of the black man and woman of America, and he is telling you on the wall of your security, it is written, your kingdom has been weighed in the balance and found wanting. So in this book of Revelations, the 12th chapter, it says, there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. The great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God, and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God night and day. Here we are looking now at war. War between the dragon, the serpent, Satan, and his angels, and Michael, and his angels. Then it goes on in the 12th verse of that chapter. It says, therefore, rejoice, you heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. And the nations are angry, and thy wrath is come, for it is the time of the dead, that they should be judged or given justice. So now you have two angry ones. Satan and his angels are angry. God is angry. Furious, the scripture says, with Satan. He's giving America a chance. Babylon could have been healed, but she was not because she refused to listen to the warnings of Daniel. Babylon then was taken and destroyed. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad asks, will America repent? Will she heed the warning of that man of God in her midst, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? Will you hear his cry to you? Will you hear the modern Moses and his Aaron a pleading with you to let the people of God go? He wants to make us into a great nation with a great future and a great destiny, and you could be pardoned and even forgiven and given an extension of time if 
you would let God's people go, will you do it? Will you repent? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote nearly 40 years ago, I doubt it very much. Well, if he doubts and doubted then that you would repent, 40 years or more later, here we are, you have not repented. You have not done justice by us. You are still deceiving the black people of America and the world. And it is written that you've been let loose now. You've come down, been thrown out of heaven. It actually is a prophecy that you're going to be displaced throughout the earth. Oh my. You'll be put out of Asia. You have your fleets there. You have your tremendous arms there. But they won't keep you in Asia. And when you lose Asia, and when you lose the Middle East, you will be put out of that area of the world. I am sorry to tell you, you think that you will survive. I warned you a long time ago, Israel, you have not had any peace. And that was nearly and from eight, 1984, I said, for 40 years, you have not had any peace, nor will you have any peace. Now, 20 some years later, you're still talking about a peace plan. But there will be no peace because the peace that you want is peace on your terms, Israel, and that is not going to happen. So all kinds of mischief and trouble is being made in that area of the world. Remember that scripture, the devil has come down unto you having great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. His wrath his mischief making, his blood shedding, his meddling in the affairs of other nations is now being seen in the Middle East. Why would the Palestinians not want a separate state? Why wouldn't they want their own people that have been made vagabonds in the earth to have the right of return to their native land. Why would you say you want two nations side by side living in peace, but you will never allow the Palestinians to be armed to protect the sovereignty of that state. You will never allow them the weapons that would allow them to protect their own airspace you know that and I know that so what kind of sovereignty will they have with no ability to protect themselves from any outside force no I'm sorry there will be no peace with Israel and the Palestinians and Israel are you beginning to see you're losing all over the world as I wrote when we put out the second edition of the book the secret relations between blacks and Jews I warned all of you that there is a way that you could sit down with the nation of Islam and work out a way forward. What was does not have to be what is, but if you persist in fighting me as the representative of that great Messiah, then you are only hastening the day of your doom. So Israel, you are saying already, if you go down, 
you're going to take the whole world down with you. We've heard those sayings before. America has power with her atomic weapons to kill the people of the earth several times over. But you will never get a chance to do it. We know these things, although many will die. And the scriptures teach us if those days of judgment were not shortened for his elect's sake, no soul would be left alive on the earth. That beast in Revelations 12 and 12, woe to the inhabitants of the earth for the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Your wrath is seen now in Africa. You had to get rid of Muammar Gaddafi. Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, here's a man. Now, listen to this. England is in debt. France is in debt. Spain and Italy are in debt. Germany seems to be the strongest economy among the European nations. Why are you in debt? Now you see riches in Africa that you know if you have your hands on those riches, you believe it can give you power in the 21st century. Now that Gaddafi is gone, AFRICOM, the invention of the foreign policy of the United States of America under the Pentagon and the Department of Defense, you are now in Africa with American troops. You are not there to protect the Africans, you are there because you feel threatened in Africa by the presence of the Chinese and the Russians that have an advantage in Africa over you. China invited every head of state of Africa to come to Beijing and they offered the African heads of state trade deals deals that would allow China to help build the infrastructure of Africa. China has 1,250,000,000 people. She needs land, she needs food for her people. So she's in Africa trying to help Africa develop her agricultural section, trying to build roads and railroads to connect the nations of Africa. In Libya alone, I have heard that when America attacked and England and Europe attacked Libya, a hundred thousand Chinese were there working. China was helping to develop oil. China was helping to do great things for Africa and America felt that she was losing. You can't compete with China because you are in debt with China. China has the money to build in Africa to replace the rule of England and France and America in Africa. So now you're fighting back. Well, you did this once before in 1884 in the Berlin Conference. All the European nations met with the idea and the thought to carve up Africa and all its tremendous riches for the Europeans to enjoy. But it was not long when you all started disagreeing with one another which led to World War I. And now there's a new scramble in Europe for the wealth of Africa again. So there's France with her soldiers in Mali, France with her soldiers 
in the Ivory Coast, France with her soldiers in Gabon, France, England, America, all battling for the wealth of Africa. Well, you're a little late, but that scramble is going to lead you again to war, global war, that will break your power as a great nation. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad warned us, and he wrote it over 40 years ago, that the greatest disaster in this next war will be seen in Europe. No foreign power will be used to destroy the power of this great nation. As Pharaoh was raised by God to prove the existence and the power of God. For at that time, Egypt, like Babylon, was a great power in the earth and so was Pharaoh. He was so powerful he thought that he was a God beside God. So when Moses told him to let the children of Israel go in his arrogance he asked who is this that is uh, telling me to let my slaves go. He soon found out after ten plagues the last plague being death. He told Moses, come on, get your people and get out. But he couldn't bear the thought that if they got out, God was going to make them a great nation. So after he told Moses you could go and gave him a good send off and even some of the Egyptians went out with Moses and they took silver and gold with them. Pharaoh sent his army to destroy the children of Israel and Pharaoh and his army was drowned in the Red Sea. In the great seal of the United States of America, the first one that was designed on the back of that seal, the front of which had a coat of arms of six European nations that made up this new nation, this new country, the United States of America. All six of those nations were white. All six of those nations were Europeans. And if you get an old dictionary and answered the question, an American, what is an American? In those old dictionaries, it will tell you it is the people of Europe, not including the aboriginal people of the earth. This country was never made for the dark people of our planet and particularly for the black man and woman of America whom America mockingly calls citizens. But if you were citizens, why are you still fighting for equal justice, equal rights, equal education, equal employment opportunities? You are still begging for this. Can't you see? that if they cannot produce jobs for their own millions of unemployed, they cannot produce jobs for us. The time and what must be done. America, you will not let our people go. You, like ancient Babylon, are going to fight God to the end. I feel sorry for you. You know, Pharaoh fought against God, but as he was dying in the Red Sea, he recognized the power of God against his delusion of power. And he said, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And in his bearing of witness of God in his dying breath, 
the scripture teaches that his body was saved. And if you go to the museum in Egypt, you will find his body there as a sign to you, America. God saved his body so that you could see because you're in the same state or worse than Pharaoh. Babylon could have been healed. Pharaoh could have been spared. America could be spared. But it is your leaders drunk with the power of their delusion of might are ready to fight against God. Let me show you in this monumental book by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad where he describes the beast of Revelation. He writes, to call a person a beast is simply to say according to the English language, now we're dealing with nouns, a beast is a violent person, berserk or berserker, a demon, a feed, a shaitan, or Satan, or dragon, an evil spirit, a devil, Diable, Iblis, Azazel, Abaddon, Apollyon, and prince of the devils, the prince of darkness, the prince of this world, and the prince of the power of air, the wicked one, the evil one, the arch enemy, the arch fiend, the devil incarnate, the father of lies, the author and father of evil, the serpent, the common enemy, the angel of the bottomless pit. That's the meaning of beast. That's a heck of a description of this nation with three more added, four beasts. One of these beasts more deadly than the others. And a beast had the three ribs of a man gripped in his teeth. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you had the black man in your teeth under your grip for 310 years as a chattel slave and you so-called freed him. Beloved black brothers and sisters, don't you go to the movie and see Abraham Lincoln and think that that man really freed you? He did not love you any more than George Washington. George Washington had many black slaves and Abraham Lincoln said that if he could keep the union without freeing the slaves, he would never have freed the slaves. Go read the history and not be enchanted by Hollywood trying to put a good face on the so-called great emancipator. If he's the great emancipator, why are you still singing, we shall overcome? It is because you have not been set free. That is what God has come to do and he He's making the case for your true liberation. Yes, my beloved brothers and sisters, Abraham Lincoln only freed the slaves in the South, not the ones that were in the border states of the North, because Abraham Lincoln wanted to break the power of the South, and so he issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Never be deceived by the so-called show of friendship and good. The enemy only offers you friendship to deceive you into going along with them to their doom. Well, there's an adjective that also describes beast in Roger's thesaurus, satanic devilish, diabolic, hell-born, demoniac, savage, brute, fierce, vicious, wild, untamed, ungentle, barbarous, unmitigated, unsoftened, ungovernable, uncontrollable, obstinate, brute force, forcibly, by main, with might and main, by force of arms, at the point of the sword or bayonet. The above 
is the explanation of the beast found in this monumental book, Message to the Black Man. And if you want to get these books and study the words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, go to NOI.org and ask for these publications. And now, my beloved brothers and sisters, if you doubt that we have been under a beast, the Bible says we receive the mark of the beast in our forehead and in our hands. Look at the way we think, black brother. Your thinking is not right and your hands are doing the work of your thoughts. And that's why in the ghettos of America, we've become the number one killers of ourselves and our people. We are fierce, we are brutal, we are demonic, we are at the force of arms. You get these guns and you love to just point them at people and shoot them down like wild dogs. The enemy has made you into himself and you too are headed for divine destruction. Let me read something to you from the book of Revelations, the ninth chapter, the sixth verse. Because the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to you that God is not going to allow you to go down with the enemy, but preaching is not going to get you. He told me before he left, brother, it's going to take more than preaching to get our people. And what he was saying is that you are going to have to be chastised into submission. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said there's one year that it will come upon you worse than at any other time in your life. Hear what we are saying please. It's written in Revelation 9 and 6 and in those days. What days? the days of God's judgment and fury on the enemy. Shall men seek death and shall not find it? And they shall desire to die and death will flee from them. This is where we are heading. One great year of chastisement for you and me and us. And remember, as these calamities increase, oh America, this is the country I have known. At one time I hated you America for the evils that you have done to our people. But as Paul said, when I was a child, I, I thought as a child, I spake as a child. But growing into the maturity of the word, you were made to do exactly what you have done. And in the last message that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad gave to us before he departed from among us, he said, you cannot blame the clay. You blame the potter who shaped the clay. You were shaped in a nature that was adverse to the nature of God. The things that you do much of it, you can't help it. And that's why Jesus said, I know you. You are of your father the devil. He was a liar and a murderer. And that lie is born into your nature. You are the great deceiver. That lie and murder is born in your nature. One of these broadcasts, I want to go into this with you and then help you to see that there's a door out for you just as there is 
a door out for us. In closing, remember the beast, the dragon in the book of Revelation, the dragon that gave power to the beast? Have you noticed that every president, when they are elected, they find their way to Rome to seek counsel and advice from the Pope? But recently, nobody becomes a president of the United States without going before Israel or APAC and promising the Zionists everything that you think will allow you access to their wealth, their influence, and their power. Well, astride that beast, there was a woman. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that the enemy will use his women against us in the last days of their rule. Do you remember a time when I think over 20 states in America had it in their law that no black man would ever be permitted to marry a Caucasian woman? Do you remember Emmett Till? He just whistled at a white woman, a 14-year-old boy, and they destroyed him. But today, so many black men are with white women and so many white women are with black men. You notice sometimes when a beautiful white woman passes by, you'll hear a white man say, She's a cute trick. Because Yaqub was taught a science of tricks and lies, and the female is what he uses to trick the male. Well, the man that pays for the cute trick is called a John. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad writes that many of you scholars mistakenly think that the John the Revelator is Saint John the Divine, that the, the Apostle of God. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Revelation was not written by him. The revelation was written by John or Yaqub, the father of the white race. All of the white race is named after him. And so when the trick gets the prey, he's called a John. And if you look at the common name in Russia, it's Ivan, but Ivan is another name for John. And the common name in Germany is Hans, a common name for John. In France is Jean. In England, John Bull. And whenever someone dies and you don't know their name, you call him John Doe. And the most common name in America is John. You're not named after the prophet John. You're named after your father, Yaqub, the scientist that brought you out from the original people and gave you knowledge and power to rule the original people until the coming of God. God is not to come. He's present. And the words that you are hearing from our lips, it says on his coming, he will consume Satan with the brightness of his coming 
and with the Spirit from his mouth. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and I would America that you could escape the wrath of God. One of these broadcasts I'm going to read the writings of Abraham Lincoln in his Lincoln Douglas debates the writings of George Washington, the writings of Thomas Jefferson. None of them wanted to keep you here. They all knew that separation was and is the answer. And to you, my black brothers and sisters, who really are deceived by the wealth of America, you don't want separation, but you are not thinking of the masses of your people that don't have a future. But if America lets us go and gives us a good send off, millions of acres of land that we may be able to provide a future for ourselves, America. This is what must be done. And if you get together with your scholars, don't listen to Negroes. Don't listen like they had the White House conference with Lincoln and he wanted to separate blacks and his Negroes. I, you can't listen to Negroes. They're made into you. They don't want to leave you. They love you because you give them nothing but hell. Black man, wake up. Black woman, wake up. Clean up. Stand up. It's time for us to go for self. So I'm so honored. So grateful to God. We are here in Phoenix and we've been blessed to do five broadcasts in the last five days to get us going through the month of April and then into the month of May. I thank you all so much for listening. I want you, my brothers and sisters, to get on YouTube, get on Facebook, Get on Instagram, get on Twitter, and take some words out of my broadcast and tweet it and put it up and create a dialogue, an intelligent dialogue without vitriol and bitterness. The time has come. Thank you for listening and may Almighty God Allah grant you the light of understanding as I greet you in peace. Assalamu alaikum. Brothers and sisters, please log on again next week and every week this year for the time and what must be done. Tell your friends, tell your family. Log on to NOI.org every Saturday, 6 p.m. Central Time for truth, guidance, and unequaled love from the National Representative of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Nation of Islam, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Pass on the word every Saturday at 6 p.m. Central Time at NOI.org. The time and what must be done. Remember, to have Minister Farrakhan answer your questions, tweet them to at Louis Farrakhan, hashtag Ask Farrakhan. And to add this message to your library or as a gift for someone you love, go to store.finalcall.com.